uh, I really would echo, uh, you know, Mr. Srishekadat's comments that, uh, that you know, it, it is in forums like these, and 90% of us just sort of, you know, want to ignore and want to get back to the next deal, the deal we have to do an EPC on, or the deal we have to win, but it is some, is some person sitting in the corner of this forum where you sort of, you know, where a, like a Jigar Shah or Elon Musk or, a, you know, somebody like that is born. And I think somebody will have to figure out the solution. Maybe it's a CapEx OpEx hybrid. Maybe it's lending attached to the CapEx in the form of a, attached to the credit and the house of the person. You know, no, there are no bankers here. I mean, there are some ex-bankers here, but no practicing bankers, uh, you know. So maybe there's a solution like that, but the point is that's the segment, that's your 30 gigawatts, if, if, you, if, if, you had to, if I had to take a, if I, if you had to take my view on it, that's your 30 gigawatts and call it the 10 over the next five years or 10 is then the 10 gigawatts is the is what we do today and uh, 30 is to come from what you, we do not do today and I have not figured out exactly how to do today so, so those are some of my thoughts now for the fun part okay so by a show of hands how many of you thought we will build in the next 12 months less than one megawatt no, sorry, gigawatts. I mean, yeah. Less. Right. So, so there we have some. Are you bankers by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and by show of hands, because it's always good to check. Those who did not raise hand doesn't mean that they agree with your with your with your motion. By show of hands, how many of you thought we'll be installing more than a gigawatt in the next ten years? The uh, next one year, sorry. All right, most of you. How many of you thought we would be installing more than two gigawatts in the next 12 months? This widespread agreement on this, uh, this, uh, this industry has deeply matured. We all know exactly what we are doing. I mean, that's very impressive. I'm like, I'm, I think this is the first panel I've been on where I've asked this question and the, and the bell curve has been a spike, not a bell curve at all. Uh, so very impressive. Kudos to all of all of you in the sense that you agree with us. So we like that, you know. Uh, but uh, but no, wonderful. Uh, Ritu, you 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 going to say something? No. Okay. no. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so all right, uh, excellent. So I think um, with that, uh, you know, uh, perhaps uh, you know. Uh, so uh, so that has to sort of be a very very important dignitary. Uh, you know, so we'll, ex we'll excuse him. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, so um, I think what we will uh, try to do is, uh, you know, we obviously want uh, some conversation on uh, uh, the core topic. So we'll first focus on uh, the what we think are, are is going well and is easy to do in the primary industry of rooftop solar, which means 90% of the business, I mean, stuff most of us do. What are the challenges? And what might really increase the volume growth within this segment? And then if we have time, we will go to sort of the question of uh, uh, these other segments. Do people have ideas? And I think in that we'll try to involve the audience as much as we will, you know, the panelists, to see what could be the ideas to address that other sector. Uh, the first sector, which is the primary sector, I mean, we have, you have some experts here, so let's hear from them. Uh, but the second one, I don't think any one of us is an expert because we haven't done it. So we'll hear from all of us. Before we, I go there, let me just reconfirm. Uh, does anybody else have presentations that you wanted to make? All right, is it okay to, yeah, yeah so we shall blow past that one. Uh, all right, perfect, so, uh, Recently, Ritu, we've had discussions on challenges and opportunities. Um, maybe I'll start with you. Okay. What could drive this, sec this, sub uh, this area forward? Uh, and what are the challenges that we face? Okay. Uh, so things that are going well is uh, I see in corporate India a desire to adopt solar, rooftop solar, OK? So I, uh, you know, it's, they are not clueless about it. You know, if I look at even two and a half years ago, they had no idea what solar could do. So they were very interested. Oh yes, you know, we are XYZ MNC, very, very uh, 
a green, uh, you know, environmentally conscious, you take all our perimeter lights and you replace them with solar. But do not touch my plant and machinery side of things. That's very critical. And we can't have something as, uh, you know, unproven or unknown or, uh, you know, uh, something which is very unsatisfactory like solar touching my plant and machinery. So that was a level of awareness or lack of it. There was also this, which is this uh, misinformation is there even today. Why do you come to me with five rupees? I saw that bid was 2.44, okay? So fine, I'm not grid scale, I'm rooftop. I'll give you a 25% jump on that. And that's far as I'm going to go. You think I'm a fool, you think I don't read? So you're trying to jip us, okay? So that's the second level of misinformation. But other than that, there is information, there is awareness, and it helps that now when I talk to clients, I say, okay, here is you know, a video of my plant on the rooftop of Yamaha, one rooftop plant, 6.3 megawatts. This is what the production is, this is what they're saving. Here is a tracker-based ground mount plant on the premises of Hindustan Aeronautics, 4 megawatts, this is how it's been producing. Here is Walmart, 15 sites, 13 sites, or whatever it is, cumulative capacity, 5 megawatts, this is how it's working. So there are far more examples that I go with now. You know, it's, no, it's not like the portfolio is very small, and I think that helps, because what we don't have in our country is a lot of innovative spirit of trying something new. It's very, very limited to very, very few entrepreneurs. We are very good at taking something which is proven and then running with it. I'm not criticizing it, but that's the way we tend to run businesses. So that is something which is going very well. Now, but, you know, it's like, you know, the duck that you see on the water. So it's looking very calm, but it's furiously paddling in underneath. There's lots of things that we are really battling with. The very first thing we are battling with is the uncertainty in the module prices. I, for one, am not unhappy that the prices have gone up. If you look at it, for various reasons best known to the module manufacturers, they've commoditized it. They started, you know, literally, we're in the energy sector and they have taken inspiration from the biggest energy thing, which is crude oil, and said, okay, module pricing is going to behave like crude oil pricing. It's, got have, it's going to have nothing to do with cost plus. It's going to simply follow demand supply. So demand is not there, push it at marginal pricing. So apparently they have not made money in the last year, which is not good news for us, right? We need a very viable, very strong manufacturing industry to support us in the long run. Right. So that is something which is uh, kind of, uh, and this uncertainty, this wild fluctuation is not something that helps. I need to know what level it is at. No, something which is essentially a manufactured item cannot jump from 26 to 36 to 38. And I don't know where it's going to go. Is it going to go to 50? Is it going to go to 20? And why? So that is something that worries me. The lack of real manufacturing in my own country worries me. And what worries me more about this is I think we've missed the boat. I think it's very difficult for us to now catch on without either really scaling back our solar ambitions as a country, or, you know, it's going to have to come with, if you're not doing that, then it's going to cost the government a huge amount to kind of help the local industry get on power, uh, get on par. We hardly have capacities, you know, eight uh, gigawatt or something installed, of which I think five is active, and I don't know how what level some uh, some of these companies are going at you know uh, more than 100% capacity today so that's like five that is not going to meet your domestic requirement go one step back and you look at cell manufacturing installed capacity is 2. Point some gigawatt active is 1. Point something so essentially you know if you take the last mile away there is nothing so we are entirely dependent on imports you know, geopolitical scenarios, kind of duties that are coming in, relationships with China, all of these things also have an impact. Obviously, I would want a strong man domestic manufacturing segment, right? It's easier to deal with. Contract enforcement is easier, right? So the fact that it does not exist is not actually good news for me. 
but it's a bit of a quandary you know if i kind of develop domestic what happens to the cost front if i'm not able to be cost competitive what happens to my solar ambition then the regulatory side the government uh, uh, you know uh, the government might behind it unfortunately we're dealing with the power industry where it's we have a lot of interface with the government you know there we do it's a, most, all of these are grid connected plants we are with or without net metering we are kind of tapping the utility to make these plants work where is the government going with this how much support are we going to have from the regulatory front the discoms think this is hurting it is it really hurting the discoms who's there to talk on behalf of the discoms so there are all of those issues which have also come in and unless we find an answer we are not going to get real growth so there has to be all stakeholders of this industry which includes the utilities which includes the discoms which includes the government agencies to come and find a solution you know we're talking about net metering uh, being a hindering thing why is it hindering because the discoms don't want net metering so it's chicken and egg right again without net metering capacities are capped with net metering the yeah, are we really hitting the discoms uh, revenues are we hitting their profitability if we are then what's the solution to that so there are a lot of linkages and interlinkages and yeah, you know uh, points of uh, eating or i would not say eating into each other segments but there's a lot of interaction and impact potential impact that this segment has on a number of entities and we need to get them all talking together and to get some kind of a framework agreement before we can really take this journey you know into an exponential growth phase no, no thank you for those you know, very very like thoughtful insightful comments right these are some sort of, some of these very excellent ideas i think uh, you know uh, i hope uh, like all of you also appreciated the comment on modern manufacturer these are some more relevant deeper thoughts beyond the sort of my next quarter you know megawatt target or my irrs and such so you know these are some of the things all the best developers tend to think about and meaningfully are now trying to engage so that's one of the things and i think if no one else covers it then i'll try to that we are doing something about it we're trying to engage and go a little bit beyond our little sort of you know uh, our little well and just sort of hope that everything around us comes to the right place and if not then we'll complain about it uh, so yeah with that you know uh, sort of let me move to you and uh, hear your thoughts in terms of uh, you know pick any sector you know you can put, put pick, include the capex side of things uh, whatever you think are some of the key things that are going right some of the key, the key challenges that need to go right okay let's start with the good things first uh, <laughs> so uh, i think one major part of the solar capacity that we expect to install in the future is going to come from open access. As uh, uh, Ritu ma'am pointed out in her first uh, uh, in introductory uh, uh, speech. So most of the uh, industries who have high consumption, they don't, even if they have a big rooftop space, it's not sufficient to cater their load completely. And they want to go for open access, but until now, the policies were not that supporting. For example, uh, let's take a case of Maharashtra. There are two kinds of open access uh, if you want to go for it. One is you build up, you invest, as a client, you invest in your own plant and uh, you draw power out of it. You just use the states distribution uh, infrastructure to get uh, to uh, transport that power from the installation site to your uh, consumption site so that is called your captive open access another is where you get someone else to invest in that project and you buy power from uh, that particular developer so that is called third party open access so in maharashtra what uh, what was happening is uh, this there is transmission charge, weeding charge, and uh, cross subsidy charge, additional surcharge, and all this was levied on third party 
open access. And as a result, what happens is if you buy power from someone from a developer at let's say five rupees and you're ending, ending up paying the wheeling charge and all that extra charges, it goes up to eight rupees. It's coming equivalent to your power cost only. So third party open access is not that much viable in Maharashtra. But if you, uh, inst if you are going for a captive open access, you are in, uh, investing yourself, it's viable because your additional surcharge and these things are levied off. They are not, they are, uh, they are not there. So that is why the concept of uh, group captive came in. I mean, uh, Anubrat touched upon it uh, a little, but uh, I didn't explain it. Explain it. So uh, group captive has uh, helped many of the clients to fulfill their renewable energy sourcing uh, successfully and uh, uh, to avoid the this additional surcharge. But the case is a little different in Haryana. Recently, the government has uh, waived off the wheeling and transmission charges for intrastate open access. And uh, there is some policy coming up in UP as well. So it's expected to be a very favorable one for uh, there as well. So uh, in open access, I think it's going to be a good show from uh, uh, all the uh, developers and uh, we also as EPC facilitating that. So that is the good part and bad part is uh, the lead time between your approvals. I mean, uh, recently in a, uh, in a uh, news article, uh, the Airtel CEO, he quoted that I got a permission for installing a telecom infrastructure in Ghana in three days. The similar permission, if I have to get in India, it would take me two months. It's pretty much uh, same in the solar sector as well for uh, approvals, net metering. It takes us around two months after uh, getting the plant installed to get the net meter going at that particular plant. So the customer is not able to completely take advantage during those during that time. So I think if these these uh, things are uh, smoothened out. Uh, it would be better for the for the sector. Thank you. Uh, Rupam, would you like to go next? Okay, so definitely the good things first. Uh, getting a lot of push from the government also. Uh, I mean, government is acting as a good player in some areas and acting not as that much good in other areas. So, uh, for example, they have come out with another tender which uh, talks about the installation on the government buildings. So that is that would create a good chunk of capacity uh, if we talk about distributed solar. Now, the second most important thing which is a worrying factor for all of us is not just the prices or the policies of the government, but the quality that we as developers or maybe people whom we are hiring as contractors, they are putting into the plant. Definitely price is a challenge in the solar market right now. And we talk about next 25 years, none of us, I guess, have seen that time as of now. So the kind of structure we are using, the kind of uh, cabling we are doing, and how we are putting a check on the generation, the PRs, this is playing a very, this would be, right now it's not playing that of an important role, but this would be acting as one of the major things that would drive the rooftop solar industry. Because right now what is happening, there is a wave of solar. Everybody is, okay, solar, solar, solar. Who's looking into the technicalities of it? Who's checking that how the work is being done? Who's checking how is the job done is right? Or will it sustain the next 25 years? We tell to clients that we are giving you 25 years of performance warranty for modules. I wonder whether for the next 25 years, maybe those companies will even exist. So all these parameters are something that uh, would be a question and we as whole solar fraternity needs to think about it. Add on to it, uh, definitely the financing portion because in today's scenario, nobody is willing to put in their money because they want to get, a, they want to get something which is already proven. Solar, if we talk about in power terms, it's still very naive. So it would take some more time to get that proven tag. 
So uh, when we talk about uh, maybe big A plus clients, definitely financing is not a challenge. But talking about uh, B tier cities or maybe B grade tiers where the amount or the capacity available is tremendous, financing is a big challenge. So to conquer over that uh, tremendous target of 2020 or maybe next 2010 years, we need to keep a tab on how we would be financing or how if it's a capex we make the client agree on to it so educating client and keeping a tab on the quality of the solar plant i think these are two of the major points that we need to take up as a whole both excellent points and both different from those covered so far so like good panel uh, every person has new ideas so you know so thank you thank you for those and and in particular Yes, when we are referring to other, uh, you know, when we were earlier referring to the other sector, uh, the unaddressed, or what remained at least unaddressed in a specific way is what Rupam brought, already brought up, that you got the residential, you got government buildings, but you got about 10 gigawatts, if I'm saying CNI is 10 gigawatts of what we call CNI, which is single A and up, uh, there is about 10 uh, gigawatts or so, uh, rough numbers, of that category. The various other industries who very much are industries, how are you going to finance those? Are you again going to do CapEx plus plus or some or something different? Uh, you know, so, so, so excellent point and absolutely requires thinking because I don't know if some of you have noticed in the in the industry, but obviously most of us have, that if earlier uh, somewhat slightly less than good credit customers could get financed a year ago or two years ago, that's not happening now. So that segment essentially is shut. And I don't know how many of you have noticed, but that is true. That segment for RESCO financing is closed. And CapEx, you know, tends to take this, do things uh, via the speed of, that it is. Uh, with that, Gambhir. Um, I would like to add here, uh, further to enhance this sector, that uh, we should be edu uh, people, the, there should be some campaign going on uh, for this, that uh, architect, consultants should also be involved in this while they are designing the buildings, they are designing the areas. Even we are wasting a lot of, even if we consider a rooftop of a industrial building, we are using only half of the buildings. Half of the building we are not using, just like we are talking about the two, one, 1 1.5 to 1.2 giga, gigawatt for, for this year, we can simply increase to the double number by increasing the, uh, by using the complete roof of the building. There are the ways consultant can find out, architect can find out, we can also find out. Like we as a building, a pre-engineer steel building solution provider, we can provide a building with a single slope. That will be south facing. That can that we can use hunt, uh, for suppose a ten thousand square meter building. We can completely use that ten ten thousand square meter by making a single slope, or we are designing in the initial stage with the proper walkways, lifelines, and roof accesses. This can also provide the facility to work faster way, good construction and good quality of the building. Uh, this is my addition to this. This will enhance the increase the available capacity of the uh, roofing. Uh, rooftop solar in India. Th th thank you, sir. And anything that you th think is going particularly well right now? Uh, yeah, we, we are very excited because we are getting, we, we are new to the industry and we are uh, excited about the industrial uh, customers and the commercial customer. They, are, they want to solarize their roof. And uh, earlier we were getting around 2 to 5 percent inquiries. Now this keep on increasing. And they are asking the, please add the load of the solar in my building, whether I should go or, or I should not go for this. So we, we are also advising the people as we are advising how to lay out the buildings. In such a scenario, we also guide where should be their chimney, where should be the height and how it is to be properly uh, designed and how it's go, it, should, it will be suitable for the roof. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. So I hope again you sort of, you know, registered notice that uh, that you know things which are talked about at a given point of time and some of you I know uh, you know uh, from the faces and uh, you know knowing you that we've been attending conferences for three years and what was merely a let's say sort of a distant thought a chimera if you will uh, three years ago that a building should be designed better I mean you know you do I hope you do note that the person who does design the buildings builds them 
is talking about it right now amongst you in a solar conference. They weren't here two years ago and they were hardly here last year. So I mean, so th these are, so things do evolve, things do move forward, which is why sort of, I mean, I have a tendency to uh, pick the positive things uh, or speak about them first so that you know this is going well. So then what is it that I should sort of focus on and remove the hurdles? Uh, <clears throat> from my part, uh, first of all, yeah, I will, you know, I will add just more of a comment than a positive or negative, that from our perspective, and partly it gets sort of colored by the fact that we are necessarily, from inception and by our DNA, a uh, bit of a global company, uh, you know, or at least all across Asia. So, uh, so that single point is quality. Okay, so whether we have to build and compete with the rest, some of these panelists here to, on, the, on the prices of the PPA, or we like don't, we're doing a project bilaterally, we know that I can almost be certain, speaking to you today, that each one of our plants is going to last 25 years. That's how confident we are. We sort of, if I had to pick one good thing that's happening, okay, we are one company in the industry, right? I mean, at least, the, and I'm not saying others are not, they may very well be. But I can guarantee, because I know for a fact, I'm looking into my company, that we are building phenomenal rooftop solar plants. I mean, they, they are faultless. They are essentially comparable to Rolls-Royce plant, which I've also seen in Singapore. In the, that's where in the, one of the top, like best players of the industry is. And for all I know, so might be the others, right? They too have been like working on this for three years or something. Quality, I mean, gentlemen for, uh, you know, and ladies, uh, for the Apollo tires and Bajaj autos for the world, quality is nothing short of what you come across anywhere globally. And I, have to share that with you. I mean, that is, in this country where everybody, like, well, the first thing you believe is, oh, first thing we're gonna do is low price, bad quality. Absolutely not true. I can ask any of my colleagues here, if you're going to go build out there something for a Yamaha or a Polo tire or Bajaj Auto or Cognizant Technologies, you are absolutely building a phenomenal plant. And we are, we are having to, well, that's a different matter, but uh, you know, they're making us, but now they're not making us anymore. This is just in our DNA now. And that's absolutely happening. So that's a, you know, I mean, I commend the entire industry, I mean, ourselves included, but the EPCs, whom, you know, by their own volition and then a little bit from the pressure we put or the global standards in our particular case that we bring, are sort of raising the game to that level. So that's my comment on what is particularly positive about uh, about this in uh, this industry. So, you know, Rupam, I've sort of taken your point and, uh, and I've upped you on. Uh, that we are beginning to, as an industry, hit it. Yes, quality is being treated as important by this industry. Uh, the second uh, thing which I uh, think no one mentioned, but I think maybe it's because it's taken as a given, and it's in this two very sort of, uh, uh, and financing always tends to be that way. It tends to be sort of very binary. You know, it's, it, 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 it's the haves and have nots. In our particular segment, I mean, financing is uh, literally a dime a dozen. I mean, as in what I'm saying is, is plentifully available. In the subspace of large good industrial clients, there is plentiful debt and equity financing. It wasn't two a year ago, surely wasn't two, two, two years ago. All of us have built portfolios of 100 megawatts or so based on our own equity capital for most part, or the ones that you know our companies raised. And today, none of us believe that from here to 500, million dollars or 500 megawatts. We need to do that. We do have no need to do that. Neither debt financing nor the interest of the equity or infrastructure funds would let us do that. They're sort of almost, you know, knocking on our doors. That's very good news. Uh, what's less good news to go with it is that, you know, is that all those other sectors, residential, lower credit companies, government PPAs, which are not fully, you know, sort of, which have holes or loopholes, all of that is not getting the right financing that we need to do the OPEX model. CAPEX always moves more slowly than the OPEX tends to because it's an easier sell. Uh, so I think, I mean, uh, that, I mean, yeah, I would say that those would be the two key, uh, you know, things that I think would be, uh, yeah, just a word on the, ch uh, on, on, the ch on the challenges. One of the large challenges is a small and specific one. 
in nationwide simple policy related to rooftop uh, plants, uh, be that net metering, be how we incentivize discoms, uh, but Ritu touched on it in you know, some detail, so I don't need to go too much to into it, but I did want to share with you, like I promised I would, that we are working on it. We are actually working, all of us are, like many of us are together working on it, on how to incentivize the discoms, participate with them. They are, if you treat them as your enemies, they are your enemies. Uh, you know, how do we make them at nothing else, at least less of enemies? How do we incentivize them, uh, perhaps without spending money, uh, or at least our money, uh, how do we incentivize them to be participants in the growth of the solar in, uh, rooftop industry, which essentially causes them very little or no harm, actually, if you, if you get into the depths of it, uh, and I think Ritu just hinted on that and kind of moved on, if you get into the depths of that analysis, the real harm caused is minimal uh, to them. So that would be a challenge. If that challenge were removed, I think each one of the RESCOs here would increase their size by 1.5 times. Many of the plant, our plants are curtailed because of export issues. So, so with that, I'll hand it over to Thank you. you very much, uh, Anurath. And uh, definitely, Rooftop has big business sense, great potential. But when we go to the realities and see the situation, a uh, lot of challenges, not a lot of suitable roofs are there, a lot of roofs, suitable roofs are already covered with solar thermal uh, water heating solutions. Then when we, like not everybody is convinced as of now what we feel. And uh, even if like in a locality, some entity has a rooftop, even then, it does not influence a lot of neighbors to put more and more rooftops. Definitely, the industry at that level also is not that kind of developed, I would say. So, there's definitely shortage of really good uh, installers and EPCs and o &M companies or financing companies. Probably what I also feel is the local banks and branches also needs to run a campaign. So I think that would really excite everybody uh, and they probably need to take a step forward in uh, spreading the word that, you know, instead of paying your utility bills, it's better you pay EMI for certain years and then your uh, you enjoy free electricity for the rest, rest uh, of the life of the plant. My, me, myself, I have uh, solarized my own house with a 10 kilowatt plant and uh, definitely in Indore getting a good installer. <laughs> Thank you. Was a challenge, but the bigger challenge was definitely getting the agreements done with the utility, getting the net meter. The net meter company also was a little bit of pain. So at the end, uh, it all went well. A couple of months of tussle, but I'm getting very, very good generation. So I remember in the month of May when we switched the plant on, we were getting six units of electricity per kilowatt of installation done. So 10 kilowatt of system was giving me 60 units every day. And I used uh, Centec and Ryzen panels and uh, inverters were uh, uh, Solis and uh, Goodwee. So I did like four vendors in that. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, valuable insights.